Hey guys, how are you going? Welcome to the Positive Experience Podcast, where we look at the good, the bad, and the ugly in living your best life. Today's segment is called In the Trenches, where we look behind the scenes at what's happening in the clinic. Hey guys, welcome to our Positive Experience Podcast. Today's segment is The Trenches, and we have my friend here, Mike. G'day, Mike. How are you? Good, Lucky. How are you going? Hey, mate. Good, thank you. And today we're going to be speaking about a recent blog post that Mike just published. So if you haven't already, check it out. It's on our website and it's going to walk through a very popular theme called sleep. All right. So sleep is something that we all perform every day of our lives. So there could be some hacks here or some ways that can help improve your sleep, which is a big part of recovery. So if I turn the mic over to you, um, Mike. How about we start with maybe the three overarching themes, maybe the main points to the blog post, and then we'll dive in a bit deeper for each of those sections. Yeah, so I guess the first one would be how important sleep is and how it should prioritise like any other aspect of your health, like your eating, um, exercising, sleep should be treated as importantly as that. And if you don't, what the detriment of that can be. That's the first thing. And the second thing is more going into what you can do to help your sleeping habits. So there's the dark principle, which is one of them. And then the third thing is another aspect, which is the core principle. So that's another strategy you can implement to help your sleeping habits. Perfect. So if we dive into the first um, topic, right, which is um, sleep hygiene. Okay. So if I think about, say, teeth hygiene that's what your dentist would be promoting um, kind of makes sense you know if you're looking at your food strategy and the choices you make on your plate uh, that makes sense too um, how would you dive into introducing the idea of sleep hygiene uh, why, why is that important yeah so the example i gave here is more for the athletic population but i think this can be applied to anybody that's in the workforce you know being at the desk or with patients and whatnot um, where Dr. Matthew says, you know, sleep is the best legal performance enhancing drug that most people are probably neglecting in sport. It's just more touching on the fact that it has such a big effect on our fatigue levels. So he also talks about the the fight or the boxer example, where if you're having a 10 round fight and you had a pretty poor sleep the night before, so less than that um, seven to nine hours he talks about, then your chances of fatiguing during your fight goes down by 30%. So by round seven, that fighter reaches his physical exhaustion as opposed to, you know, keeping it up for the 10 rounds. So for me, that was a pretty big deal. So um, that's something I even try to implement with when I was uh, reading about the strategies is if I implement this, how is my fatigue levels over my work week? So I noticed even, you know, dr- instead of having that lunchtime kind of drop that you do have, um, my energy levels were remaining more consistent and higher towards the end of the day, not only um, at the beginning. Perfect. So, yes, the the sleep, I think the argument is like sleep consistent, like sleep hygiene, yes. Um, mm-hmm. Was there much um, information about like the duration, like how long? And this is not like a hard and fast rule, but is there like a duration that's recommended? Yeah, so he recommends seven to nine hours. Um, and the research is saying just to regulate physiological processes and to lower any chance of adverse health outcomes. So weight gain, hypertension, diabetes. Um, there's just a few of them that he goes over. So um, as to why exactly those kind of things, I'm not sure of the science exactly of it, but that's what he was recommending. Yeah, I don't think that there's any like hard and fast findings on why there's some hours more so than others that um, are better like say four hours or six hours or seven to nine hours I think it's just really the uh, return for the type and quality of the sleep that you get because we've all been there like you know if you're a university student you're cramming like five days to try and pass this exam or if you have a stressful situation at home or at work and you just lose sleep over it you feel the knock-on effect, you know, into the next day and a couple of yeah. days. It's an accumulative effect where you're going in the wrong direction. But if you're making an accumulative effect of improving your sleep, 
it has the the opposite and beneficial effects you know which is what you're raising here so i think sometimes i'm not sure how you feel about it mike sometimes is um sleep is kind of one of those things that you can gloss over you know it's it's not one of the easy to implement things strategies that we can do today but in short if we can make some little adjustments which is what you're pointing us to in your blog post it can really give you a quick return tonight when you pop into bed so definitely yeah. ways into our next point which is the let's go with the light so in terms of a dark room what's the main idea behind that so within the book which is where i'm getting everything which is the book why we sleep by dr matthew walker um he talks about keeping it dark the reason being um is all, all about the hormone autonom so melatonin is the hormone that regulates the sleep wake cycle so pretty much helps you go to sleep so if we are having blue light for example which is from laptop screen phone ipads it can even be from a bedside lamp that prior to sleeping can reduce melatonin levels by 50 percent so that can um, affect one aspect of the sleep cycle so there are some strategies you can Im Im implement to help reduce your exposure to the blue light so number one being um, some products have blue light filters so like a night mode find them on iphones um, laptops have it as well you can also get like a screen filter and put it on it as well if you want to go to more extreme measures you could also wear blue light blocking sunglasses and just wear those towards the night time especially for those people that are working late into the night and just have no choice it's just a good way to keep those melatonin levels up and not reducing them by keeping those glasses on and pretty much yeah keeping everything dark and putting on an eye mask as well because you know if you have a window that has light coming in towards early hours of the morning the brain can also be woken up like that Right, so with, with melatonin, right, the um, the hormone that helps modulate your sleep, just to get this right in my mind, if you have uh, an uptick of melatonin, does it keep you awake or does it help you go to sleep? What was that, sorry? With melatonin, how does that help? Yes, yes. so the more, the more melatonin, um, the easier it is to go to sleep. Perfect. So yes. the recommendations that you made here is if you do have products like the glasses, so if you see people that look weird because they got the orange tinge um, lenses, it's probably yeah. going to block that blue light spectrum. Yeah. And so what happens is when you have this light spectrum hit into your eyes, it will stimulate your brain. And so what will happen is it's, it's telling your brain that, that your body should prepare to wake up and instead of being in a wakeful, instead of being in a sleep state, you're moving into more of a wakeful state when your body's trying to go down to sleep. And so basically you're trying to preserve the, the melatonin to help you fall asleep. Um, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So yeah. Perfect. That plus, um, yeah, iPhones or Samsung, I'm team, team Android. <laughs> yeah. You have the blue light filter. So that's a really good application to pop on at the end of your day to help you wind down and really get a good night's sleep. Okay, so great. Light spectrum slash darkness is a good point. The other one was the temperature of the room. Tease that out for us, Mike. Yeah, so the keeping it cool principle was talking about sleep being induced um, once the core body temperature is decreased. So he was talking in particular the heat that's escaping from your hands or your feet. So that's why some people might find it pretty uncomfortable sleeping with socks on. I know I do. They get pretty hot during the night. Um, and as well, during the summer, people might find it a bit more difficult because the cold body temp is finding it a bit harder to drop during those warmer months. Gotcha. So it's better to have a cooler external environment. So basically don't have the heater running all night. It's better to have a cooler. Yeah, your body will regulate your body better. Um, and therefore, your sleep quality be, will be improved. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, some tips for that, pretty obvious one, is just cooling the room before you go to bed. So it doesn't have to be freezing, but just keep it a bit cooler, lower than ambient level. And he also suggests showering before you sleep, which is an interesting one, because what's going to happen is the core body temp, obviously, unless you're having cold showers, is going to be rising. And then just naturally, the passive process is going to begin as you sleep with heat 
escaping the body because it's already at such a high level after the shower. So yeah, there's two pretty easy ones you can implement. Gotcha. Okay. So um, as we're summarizing your blog post and you know some recovery measures for sleep, of, of the things we've discussed, what would be the one or two things that you're currently implementing to improve your sleep? So number one, I'm trying to keep it regular. I'm trying to sleep at the same time every night. Uh, this is delving more into the sleep cycles, which um, I'm not an expert on. Um, but it is helping that aspect, um, just the deep sleep, the light sleep, the REM sleep. Uh, the second thing I'm doing is just trying to eliminate the screens an hour before I sleep. So trying to get everything I need done, blog posts and whatnot, before uh, that, that point in time, just so I can have a better quality sleep. And as well, been trying to keep things cool uh, before sleeping as well. Good man. All right. So there you go, guys. Those are the, the tips from um, from Dr. or Professor? Um, Professor Matthew Walker, sorry. Matthew Walker, yeah. So I have come across the name um, with a lot of other biohackers who have interviewed uh, Professor Walker. And so his work has been espoused across lots of different channels. So do check out the references that Mike has on his blog post. And like anything, we're all performers in our day. We want to move better, feel better, look well, and sleep well. And if you start with one or two of these simple um, recommendations, then you could be on your way to having really good, deep, restful sleep, which is part of recovery. Okay, so that's our, our uh, episode today on The Trenches. Thanks a lot for your time today, Mike. And guys, remember, please check out the blog post. It's attached to this video below. Have a great day. And as always, thank you. See you guys. Thank you.